Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Unity. Now, when I look at the Unity Asset Store sales, I'm always pulled in by beautiful art, flashy particles, really cool models, and things that give me cool inspiration. But today I wanna to talk about something else. I wanna talk about the assets that are on there that actually make a big impact for me. The tools that you can get through the Unity Asset Store that are on sale and will make a big difference for your workflow or that have made a big difference for my workflow. So if you're a Unity developer, hit thumbs up and get ready to save a bunch of time and money. Just make sure you do it fast though, the sale ends on the 29th. Because I have a lot of cool tools that I wanted to share, I decided to break them down into categories, make it easier for me and for you to consume. You can jump around to whatever's most interesting, though I do recommend you just go through the whole list because there's probably something really cool and exciting that you'll come across. We're gonna talk about game kits, some very cool and interesting tools that do random unique things, performance generation, so generating your worlds. We'll talk about some dot stuff, production tools for releasing your game, and then finally wrap it up with some very cool animation tools that have been highly recommended. My first category is toolkits, and the first tool out of these is one that I've actually used, RTS Engine. This is a tool that'll allow you to build your own real-time strategy game without coming up with all of the low-level parts, the systems for designing how you build units, how units interact, how they fight, how they navigate, or how the multiplayer connection all works. If you wanna build an RTS, I definitely recommend you check this out. If you don't use it for your entire game, at least use it as a starting point and a good learning resource to figure out what you might want to put into your RTS and what makes a good RTS system. If an RTS isn't big enough for you though, you can always build an MMO. The Atavism Toolkit allows you to do just that. Atavism X5 allows you to set up your own MMO server and your own MMO clients, of course, and just build out an MMO RPG without having to write all of the underlying code. It comes with a whole bunch of systems, and you can see from the demos and the videos just what's included. It's essentially all of the pieces that you would need for your own MMO. If you're really crazy like me and you just want to make Make your own MMO or you just want to see how this is built I definitely recommend you check it out and at half off I don't think you're gonna find a better deal on seeing exactly how one of these is put together the next one RPG builder is one I haven't used myself but it came extremely highly recommended from a lot of friends and viewers by the way if you have a good recommendation drop it in the comments I'm kind of curious to know what it is that you guys like if I miss anything along the way. And also just want to note that the developers of this asset are very responsive. I've noticed they even comment on quite a few of the videos that I do, especially when I mention RPG Builder. But this is a tool that'll allow you to build out your own role-playing game, again, without having to code the entire thing up. It's kind of the theme of this section. Systems or games that are just kind of pre-built and you put in your own content and then customize and build around them. If that's what you're looking for, then RPG Builder is a great option and it's 70% off right now. So you should definitely grab it while it's on sale. Now, if you want to build something more action-y, maybe with cars, then you're in luck. Because when I was looking, I realized there were four different car controllers on the asset store sale, all marked 70% off. And I haven't tried all of them. I have used Eddie's vehicle physics though, and it was amazing. Just allowed me to set up a car, drive around, and make a racing game in about an hour. It just had everything set up and worked. I assume that the other packs, given their great reviews, are about the same though. So pick the car pack that you want, maybe pick two or three of them while they're on sale. Get three for the price of one, may as well. And then go with the one that works the best and build out an awesome racing game. Now we're gonna look at some cool and interesting tools, things that you can add to your project that don't completely change your game, or maybe they do, but definitely add a lot of interesting flair either way. So let's start with Rayfire. Rayfire is a kit that allows you to add fracturing to your game. You can make it so that your buildings or other objects are destructible, pre-fracture them out, and then allow players to shoot them to destroy them, or even rip them apart. It's something that I've done in VR using this specific package, and it worked really well, and it was just nice and simple to do. So if you want destructible objects and destructible buildings, check out something like Rayfire, or get it while it's on sale. 
On the opposite end of destroying stuff, you could also build things out with some code and with this cool shapes plugin. I've heard a lot of people talk about how great it is and I'm actually grabbing it myself while it's on sale to start working with it. I always thought maybe I couldn't do much because my visual skills are kind of weak, but from what I understand, this is gonna help me really build out some cool debugging and useful tools, not just for my players, but for myself while I'm putting my games together. If you've used Shapes before, by the way, drop a comment down below and let me know what it is that you used it for. What was the use case? I really want to get my mind rolling on different ideas and see what I can come up with. The fluffy grooming tool is one that my buddy Andrew talks about almost every time we're on the game dev show. So if you haven't tuned in, by the way, check it out every Sunday. We talk about game development topics. And this is one that comes up relatively regularly. He's got characters on the asset store that need fur and the fluffy grooming toolkit apparently just allows you to do that. You get nice, fancy fur and fluff without having to have your artists build it all out for you. This is something that I found really interesting because I've seen lots of people struggle with fur and hair and just avoid it completely. So if you need hair and fur, definitely give this thing a try. See if it maybe solves all of your problems. And if so, let me know in the comments. The next cool tool on my list is Megafires 2. It allows you to do live runtime mesh deformation, which really makes for some awesome effects. You can see they've got some rockets that bend and deform and do some interesting things, but I think that the bounciness that you get from things like cannon shots or objects landing is an even cooler effect. It's relatively easy to set up in here. So if you want these effects, grab Megafires 2, pull it in, and if you make something awesome, drop a gift down below, share it with us, and let me see what it is that you made. The final cool tool I wanted to share is Klaxels, and I've gotta admit that I have no idea how to use this. It looks really cool, and a lot of people recommended it and asked about it, so I thought I would share it and see what everybody else thinks. It seems neat, but it's way beyond my artist skills. If this is something that you use though and you think that everybody else should, let us know why we use it and how we actually go about making something cool if we have no art skills. Now let's talk performance. There were four different performance packs that I found interesting in this sale. One around the baking of meshes, Mesh Baker, which if you haven't seen, is an asset that allows you to bake and combine multiple meshes into a single mesh. It's great for optimizing draw calls and improving performance. Another one that I found pretty interesting is Bakery. This is a light mapping tool that does enhanced or sped up light mapping if you have the correct GPU. It does require an NVIDIA 6 series GPU or newer, but if you have that and you've been dealing with very slow bake times for your light maps, then checking out Bakery is definitely something you should do. The final two performance tools were both imposter systems, and imposter systems will allow you to generate quads or images of objects in the background so that you don't have to render out the full-on object. There's Amplify Imposters, which a lot of people I know have used and highly recommend, that'll go out and bake all of these imposters for you in advance and have them ready to use when your game is playing so that you don't need to render these big objects. Or there's the imposter's runtime optimization that does this all at runtime, taking live screenshots or snapshots of your objects. Now we had a discussion about this on the game dev show about why you might want one versus the other. And I think that the biggest point for the runtime one is if you're going to allow for lots of customization, then generating them at runtime might make a lot more sense. If you're not doing that, then generating them in advance might make more sense. So take a look at both, maybe go back and watch that discussion if you're unsure or grab them both while they're half off. Now, if you're really interested in performance, you might also be interested in dots or the data oriented tech stack. And I'm happy to say that for the first time, at least that I've noticed, there are a couple of packs in the lightning sales. The first one that I wanted to call out is the DotsNet package. It's a networking package in case you're using the data-oriented tech stack. You wanna build a high-performance multiplayer game? From what I hear, this is the way to go. It's kind of what everybody's using, and it's 70% off, so you should probably check that out. Now, if you're not building a multiplayer game or you are building some sort of multiplayer game that has a character in it and you're using Dots, you'll probably wanna check out the Dots character controller that works with the Dots physics system and gives you a nice character that runs around a lot like you would have in an old school character controller that's outside of Dots. So 
that's something that you need, check it out while it's half off. Now it's possible you're at the point of development where you're still building your worlds. And if so, then this section's just for you. We're gonna cover four really cool procedural generation tools. The first is actually a giant bundle, the Procedural Worlds World Building Bundle that includes Gaia for building out giant terrains and Gina for building cities, roads, and connections, Sector for building out dungeon type areas and indoor areas, Pegasus for their live fly throughs and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you haven't seen Gaia before, you should probably go check it out because everybody I know who's worked in Unity has at least heard of and seen it and you're definitely missing out there. Another tool every Unity developer I know has either used or tried out or owns themselves is the A-Star Pathfinding Pro. This has been around since the early days of Unity and provides a live dynamic generation for your A-Star nav meshes. It lets you do some interesting navigation stuff that the built-in nav mesh system just doesn't support. It's got lots of cool features and functionality and it's really highly rated. If you're having problems or maybe struggling with something in the Unity nav mesh system that you can't get to work, check this out and see if maybe it'll solve the problems for you. If you're more excited about the world generation stuff though, then take a look at Dungeon. It's a generation toolkit that allows you to generate dungeons, just like the name says. You can do all kinds of cool variation and customization, and it works with a lot of the dungeon asset packs that you'll see on the asset store. So you can put them in there and then just build out a nice, interesting dungeon, or randomize and make a whole bunch of different ones, or even do it, I believe, at runtime. This last generation tool is the only one that I haven't actually used, but it looked so cool in the trailer that I thought I've got to grab this while it's on sale and see if it really is as cool as it looks. That's the Tile World Creator 3. It looks like they've been doing this for a while, so I expect this world creator to just be awesome. The worlds look really neat, and I think that I've got a couple interesting tile-based game ideas that I want to experiment with. If you've tried this before, though, and have some thoughts or feedback on it, let me know. My second to last category, and one that I think probably applies to the least people, but it applies to the people that are actually getting games out there, is production. And I've got two interesting assets in here. The first is the Steamworks Complete V2. If you're working on building a game that has Steam integration and you want to have some of the more advanced Steam integrations, then this is going to wrap all of that for you and make it nice and simple. Now, you don't need a library like this necessarily to work with Steam, but if you're looking at the code and the SDKs and thinking, ah, oh, this is kind of a pain to work with, then something like the Steamworks Complete Library that's on sale will probably make that quite a bit easier for you. The other production tool is the B-Byte Obfuscator, and this is a tool that will hide or change your code so that people trying to decompile it or look at it afterwards will have a much more difficult time. It'll rename your variables to random things and your methods and kind of restructure stuff in a way that doesn't change the flow of your code, doesn't change the way your game works, but makes it a whole lot easier to break apart or debug as well. Now there are some downsides. Of course, if you wanna debug your live release code, it gets a little bit harder to do once it's obfuscated. But if you really wanna hide stuff away and you don't want people looking at your code for some reason, then Obfuscator is a nice, easy way to do that in an easy Unity context. This last category only applies to people who are building games with characters that animate. So, probably all of you. Now, what are these packages? They're animation and IK packs. The first one that I want to talk about is Final IK. It's an inverse kinematic system that allows you to very easily define the things that you want to do. You want your character's feet to step and land properly on steps, you can assign the feet, attach the script, and set it up without having to write all of the code. Same for grabbing objects, leaning around things, or any sort of kinematics that you might want to do, where you're controlling the character outside of the animation, forcing them to do something to interact with the world in a more realistic way. Final Final IK is one that I've had for six years now, it looks like, and I've been recommending it ever since. So definitely recommend you check it out if inverse kinematics or this kind of effect is anything that you've considered using before or is something that you have considered using before. I work on my words, but you get the idea. Definitely check out Final IK. 
Animancer, on the other hand, is one of the assets that I haven't tried, but everybody swears it's awesome. It allows you to control animations without having to go through the standard mechanism blend tree setup or the animator controller setup. You don't have to deal with the transitions. You can just modify and adjust everything directly from code, and apparently it works really well. I'm going to grab it while it's 50% off, but if you've used it and have some thoughts on it, drop a comment down below and let me know. Also, if there's anything to watch out for or something I should know when I'm using Using it, let me know about that too. I'd like to get a good head start on it. The last one on my list was Dynamic Bone, but I realized I bought it, got it, and I haven't actually dug into it and taken a quick look at it. I know that it's supposed to allow you to do some bone simulation or physics simulation on bones, but I haven't really dug into it enough to really recommend it or try it out or talk about it, I should say. If you have used it though and you recommend it, drop a comment down below. This came recommended by my buddy Yorai, and I think that it's probably worth checking out. I just haven't had a chance yet. All right, that's my list of awesome tools and assets from the asset store. If you had something that I missed, I'm sure there was something that I missed, drop a comment down below. Let me know and maybe I'll cover it in the next one. And also just want to say thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up button. And if you're interested in game development stuff, make sure that you check out gamedevguild.com. We've got an online conference coming up in just a month where you'll be able to learn and talk to a whole bunch of interesting Unity experts and developers. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you go to gamedevguild.com. And if you're interested in any of these assets, of course, I've got links for all of them in the description below. Just go pick the one that you want, check it out, and uh, see if maybe that'll fit and fix some of your issues for your projects. All right, I'm going to shut up now and just say thanks again and goodbye.